Hi guys, Richard Blaine here, Mr. Easy Cooking. I want to thank you for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. You know, I wasn't even planning on making anything tonight because this is my off week. I've been doing two videos a month now for about the last year because for the last three, three and a half years, hectic schedule doing a video a week. It was just so draining. So uh, I went down to two videos a month, but I got a couple of requests this last week, about two weeks ago or so I made some Spanish spaghetti sauce and one of my subscribers, a guy named Josh L, said, well now that you've shown us how to make Spanish spaghetti sauce, why don't you show us how to make chorizo? And I thought, hmm, not a bad idea because I have all the spices and ingredients in my pantry behind me to make the spice mixture and so I went to my local butcher and I had him custom grind me some pork butt okay in a fine grind and an ultimate coarse grind okay and decided okay you know chorizo is actually a really easy recipe to make complex with the measurement of the ingredients the herbs and spices but in and of itself very easy to make okay so I decided this week I'll make chorizo because you know what I'll use it all week long for lunch at work you can use chorizo for so many things chorizo and egg chorizo potato chorizo noodle chorizo grilled cheese oh my god I'm gonna drool right now chorizo for so many things it's delicious mmm chorizo and cheese fries oh god drooling so this week I'm gonna make a traditional pork chorizo Chorizo de puerco suelto, loose chorizo, and then I'm going to wrap it in saran wrap and sausage shapes, and it's going to be pretty good. So as usual, YouTube, stick around. I'll see you on the other side. Now, when you buy chorizo in the supermarket, in the tube, okay, unless you get chorizo from other Spanish-speaking countries that are actually hung and air-cured for long amounts of time, usually when you buy Mexican chorizo in the plastic tube, it's rather granular, very sandy, very loose, and that's not the kind of chorizo that I like. But usually that kind of chorizo is made with this kind of pork, okay? This is pork butt, and when you buy this at the supermarket or at the butcher, usually this type of ground pork is run through the grinder three to four times to get that fine ground meat texture. What I like to do is I like to mix that with this kind of pork. This is ultimately coarse ground pork butt. Okay, you see there's chunks of meat, there's chunks of fat, okay, there's chunks of meat and fat, but I do this, this is about the average cut of meat in an ultimate coarse grind pork butt right here. This is about the average size, okay, of the meat. And I do that with my chorizo strictly for the chew to give it some texture so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix these two together by hand well and then we'll move on to the next step so you stay tuned alright guys and girls there's the pork mixed together I mixed it together by hand for about two minutes maybe three minutes you want the really ultimate coarse and the really fine ground mixed together well and I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator to chill for a about an hour actually I want to get it really nice and chilled up and then the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna put together the spice mixture Now, like I said this is a very easy thing to do you can make chorizo with pork with ground chicken ground turkey ground beef any kind of meat you want to grind you can make chorizo as a matter of fact I'm gonna make you guys a vegetarian chorizo coming down the road that's gonna be excellent but in the meantime you can make chorizo with any kind of meat that you want all right and it'll come out delicious with this spice mixture it's an easy recipe to make where it gets complex is the amount of herbs and spices that you use in order to create a balance so I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and then we're gonna make an herb and spice mix now it's time to put together the spice mixture okay now there are a lot of ingredients in the spice mixture right now the first thing I'm gonna use garlic granules okay now I always talk about making food making dishes with the ingredients you have on hand you could use fresh garlic in this recipe I didn't have any fresh garlic and to tell you the truth 
I didn't feel like going to the store to buy any, but I have garlic granules. So usually what I do is about, uh, about one half to one teaspoon of the granules for every clove of fresh. Okay? Then I have some extra hot cayenne chili powder. Now, some people, if they want to do it the traditional Mexican way, and either way, with powder or with fresh, it's traditional, will take a combination of dried chilies and will soak them in hot water, cut them and de-seed them, and then process them in a blender of some sort. And that's one way you can do this, and it's perfectly fine. It works. Using the powders is another way. It just depends on the family. It depends on where you are at the time. That's two tablespoons of extra hot. I might add more. This is... Two, two teaspoons, excuse me, of ancho chili powder. Not so much for heat, but more for flavor. You gotta have some flavor, okay? Then I've got some smoked paprika. That's gonna be for flavor as well as color. You know, between two and three tablespoons. You just have to judge it, you know? Now, I don't have any sweet paprika, but when you're using chilies and paprika, you want some sweet. So that's about two teaspoons of brown sugar, okay? Because there's going to be some heat going on here, all right? So you do what you got to do. Now, the trick with sausage, chorizo is sausage, is you have to cure sausage. Now, you could use two types of salt. You could use tender quick, which a lot of people use. That's salt with potassium. The potassium creates the nitrates and nitrides, or you could just use, and we will make the meat pink. But if you don't want to, you could just go at standard sea salt. About one tablespoon for every pound of meat, one tablespoon to one and a half tablespoons for each one, okay? A little bit of crushed Mexican oregano. Oh my God. Oregano of any kind, as far as I'm concerned, is good oregano, okay? Freshly crushed black peppercorns, okay? Gotta have black peppercorns, just delicious. Mmm. This is cumin powder that I toasted with coriander powder. Whenever you use cumin, okay, you don't have to do it all the time with coriander, okay? But whenever you use cumin seed or cumin powder, it's always, always best to toast it first, okay? And then it's coriander. Okay. Just smells delicious right now. Oh my God. A little bit of cinnamon. Oh boy. Yeah, a lot of people say that eh, chorizo will give you a heart attack and I guess if you ate it three times a day with, you know, five eggs at each time, it might. But when you look at the chorus of the herbs and spices that go into this mixture, it's as healthy as, and this is literally, even though this is Mexican, this is literally a curry powder being invented right here. A Mexican curry, even an Indian curry. And that's all about spices and good health and eating. Okay, there's a little bit of clove. Digestion, it's just terrific. A little bit of thyme. Just, just amazing. And a little bit of allspice, okay. Now I'm going to take this whisk. This is a ball bearing whisk, not a regular whisk. And I'm going to aerate this stuff together, okay? For about one to two minutes. I want to really get this mixture well mixed. Now we're going to move on to making the chorizo. I want you guys to realize there is two pounds of meat here. This is going to make a lot of chorizo, okay? There's two pounds of meat. Now, one of the ingredients you use to make chorizo is vinegar for acidity. Acidity helps to break down the fats, helps to break down connective tissue, okay? Adds flavor. Most recipes call for apple cider vinegar, standard, okay? That's fine. I am going to move a little bit more closer to the Spanish way of doing this, and I'm going to use red wine vinegar, okay? Instead of regular apple cider vinegar. I'm going to use the red wine vinegar and about half of the spice mixture. Huh? Yep, that's about half right there. Okay, and I'm going to get in here and I'm going to mix this up. Okay, and get the meat wet with the vinegar. 
okay? I'm gonna get the meat wet with the vinegar. The meat's gonna soak it up, okay? It's soaking it up right now, and it's soaking up the herb and spice mixture, okay? And we're gonna get this puppy going. This process of mixing like this, probably gonna take about five minutes. You want it in there well, okay? The color's gonna change red, okay? Not super duper red like you see in the supermarket stuff, okay? Because they just bury it in a whole lot of paprika and pepper. It's really not necessary for the flavor. But I'm gonna mix this up for about five or so minutes by hand, just like I'm doing here. And then we're gonna move on to the next step of cooking a tiny little patty and adjusting the spices accordingly. Okay guys, there you have it. That there is two pounds of chorizo sausage, okay? I've been working it real hard actually for about 10 minutes, getting all them herbs and spices mixed in there really well. And you can see the color has changed to a nice red. Now usually the stuff you buy in the supermarket is literally bloody red in the tube. And that's because they add an overabundance of chili powder or they might actually add some tomato puree or some kind of tomato product. I don't do that. This, this, this is how chorizo is supposed to look, okay? It's not supposed to be bloody red like you see in the commercial tubes. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator, 45 minutes to an hour to give it a good chill. Then I'm gonna cook up a small patty and taste it to see where, if any, I need to adjust the herb and spice mixture, and then we're gonna roll it up. All right, what I'm doing now is I've just made myself a tiny little patty of the chorizo, okay? And I've cooked it about one minute on one side, and I'm gonna cook it for about another minute on this side. And then I'm going to taste it, and I'm going to decide whether I need to adjust any of the herbs and spices. If I do, I'll add the herbs and spices to the ground pork and mix it in. If not, I'll leave it really as it is. And from what I can see here and from what I can smell, it's pretty much on target. Okay, but guys, there it is. Chorizo. I made myself a little patty. I ate it. It was really nice and hot and spicy. <sighs> Whew. That extra hot cayenne, oh my god. One tablespoon for one pound of pork, just right on target. Mixed with the ancho chili and paprika, just delicious. And then, I wrap it up like this, in saran wrap, in different size chubs, okay? For what I'm gonna use it for. Big meals little meals, okay? But I wrap it like a sausage in saran wrap, okay? And I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, okay? I'm gonna put the, the sear chorizo in the refrigerator for about three days, okay? You can let it cure for one day to one week, okay? Because there's enough salt in there to cure this chorizo, okay? I am probably going to leave this in the refrigerator before I use it for a minimum of three days, a maximum of a week to allow the meat and the spices and the salt to cure. And then I'll put these in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer. In this particular condition, they will last as long as six months in the freezer if wrapped properly. But there you have it. Traditional Mexican chorizo. All right guys, Thank there you, you have it. Traditional Mexican chorizo done my way. Lots of herbs, lots of spices, very complex flavors, but a very easy recipe to do. As I said, you can do it with ground chicken, okay? Ground pork, ground beef, ground veal, ground turkey. You can make this chorizo with anything just using the herb and spice mixture and I've got a vegetarian version coming up for you very soon. So I want to thank Josh L, one of my subscribers, for asking me to make this chorizo and I want to thank you for stopping by and watching and as usual I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you very much. I hope you comment, subscribe, like and share this video. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Take care.